I can reach out when I see somebody falling and help them stop falling. I can, I can fast for one day a week and I can give that food I would have eaten to somebody else who doesn't have any food. I, I can share what I have, especially if I have food. It's even if it's a candy bar, I can give a piece to you and a piece to you and a piece to me. It's a simple thing. Because the Buddha understood when he looked at the world and saw the suffering. He had this idea in his own research. What would happen if I stayed over on this side and I lived with unwholesome minds, thoughts, words, and actions? So he did that for a while. And it didn't work out so well. And it wasn't a good idea. People didn't want to be around him. Nothing worked smoothly. Nobody wanted to help him. Then he went on the other side. And he decided to see what would happen if he lived with pure thoughts and pure words and pure actions. And, and what happened? People helped him. People were willing to help him on his journey. What I'm talking to you about was in the Dvaita Vitaka Sutta. Majima Nikaya number 19. If you read, and if you read that sutta, if we went through the whole story, it makes you stop and think. That's where he may have decided that maybe Sila was going to play a big part in this. So then later when he started teaching, he started to talk about the precepts. And you said the precepts tonight. But they're not just to say. They are to live. Why are they so important to live the precepts? Well, I had to figure out how to explain it so you can remember it. And I started thinking, what is it that everybody could remember about why do you have to keep the precepts? And, and what I came up with was a car. A car. It's all about a car. So, an automobile. 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 Okay. Automobile. 
So I said to a young man, I, I, I said to a young man like that one, so what kind of car do you want me to give you, a Maserati or a Ferrari? A Ferrari. Okay, so everybody likes a Ferrari. So how does a car have to work? How do you buy a car and then have your car work the way the factory tells you it's going to work really well? Well, I worked on a farm and all of, all of the cars and all of the tractors had five things in them that made the engine run the right way. Every car has gas in it. And every car has oil in it. And every car has brake fluid in it. And every one has steering fluid in it. And every car has transmission fluid in it. So let me ask you a question. Now you, now you have a Ferrari. Are you going to be able to go to the mountains if you don't have any brake fluid? Uh -uh. So what if you're in the traffic trying to drive this really cool car around and there's a lot of traffic and you don't have the right amount of steering fluid in the car? You're going to have an accident. Right? <laughs> and, and what about if you want to go on a really cool date, pick up a girl and go on a date, and you're going to go for a trip or something, but you don't have enough transmission fluid? Boy, did you lose out. <laughs> no way. You can't go. It's, so, the car is not going to run smoothly unless you give it the right amount of fluids. And if we call the car, whatever, what's your name? Ratnabi no, model Pradnadip. Pradnadip model car is not going to work <laughs> unless it ha <laughs> unless he keeps the Pradnip model is not going to work as a human being unless he keeps his precepts. <laughs> So, these precepts are designed not as commandments, but as operational advice. Makes everything run smoothly, and when your life runs smoothly, then you can support yourself and you can support other people. 
So the, the sila becomes really important for you to understand that that's how you run your life the best. It's how your mind stays the clearest and your whole body operates the best. And, and life runs pretty smooth, more smoothly. Okay. So understanding the sila is doing that for you. The next thing we have to look at is what happens if you break a precept. This is something the Buddha talked about, Hiri and Otapa. Can you tell him? Fear and dread about what you've done. And fear and dread means you are afraid about what you have done. Okay. He got it. Okay. All right. So if you break a precept, this is not the end of the world. But if you break a precept, you, you need to forgive yourself. Take the precept again. And start again and don't do that again. And this is how we learn to clear our mind. The third part of this is called bhavana. Bhavana. The third part of this is called bhavana. Dana, sila, we have generous. Bhavana. Now, bhavana, when we explain bhavana, we, we usually hear people say it means development of mind. And this is true. This is correct. Because mind is the forerunner of every state we live in. It all begins with mind. Before you take any action, it begins with mind. Okay? But it also can be translated another way. It can be translated as development of behavior. It can be translated as development of behavior. A person's behavior changes when, when they are practicing the Buddhist practice the right way. The true marker or indication that you are on the right track, you are, are developing. More compassion, many more smiles, which is joy in life, and more balance 
of mind. So if you start yelling at me, I'll probably sit here and listen. But I, bet, but I bet you that I won't yell back. In, 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 instead, if someone is upset with me, I can look at them with compassion. And I can see that something's wrong with your day. Something happened that is making you sad or angry. And I can listen to you until you're finished. And then I can take you to get ice cream. <laughs> or tea. Or coffee. And definitely chocolate. Because if I give you a piece of chocolate, I bet you're going to smile. And, and when you smile, we can talk about what happened that, that made you feel so bad and get so angry. Because I know it wasn't about me. <laughs> So we can start again. So this is how we can manage to see what the change is in the personality of the person. How they are, I got till the 10.30, 20.30. This is, this is how we get to see the change in the personality of the person as they are developing they start taking things more lightly and they become they become happier so if the personality change is not happening, if the person is struggling to be alone and just practice the meditation very hard, in a very hard way, and they're not able to get along with people, it might be time to tune up how they're doing the meditation. To take a look at what's going on. Now, our tradition comes from the suttas directly. First, if there are valuable things that are existing in the commentaries, that support the sutta's teaching, it's very usable, it's very acceptable. But if we're not smiling, and we're not finding less and less stress in our lives, and it's not helping us with the way we live our life, then it's time to tune it up like a car. And that's what Bhante is going to talk to you about. Right? <laughs>
Now, when, when people come to our retreats, and I hope to be able to teach some retreats here in India, these are not long retreats. These are only about 10 days long. And sometimes we, sometimes, sometimes there are five days with more teaching involved. But they're normally ten days long. And I have seen people come in to these retreats. From, from all over the world. From all over the world. And when they arrive, some are very, very stressed out and depressed. But by the time they leave, they begin to understand that the suttas told us something very true. In the end, Guter Nikaya, um, in the Book of Threes, Section 125, no, Section Book of, I'm sorry, Book of Threes, no, 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 you're not thinking the same thing. Book of Threes, Section 125. Book Three, the Buddha made a very important statement. He said, I do not I do not teach you a Dhamma without a basis. I do not teach you a Dhamma without knowledge. And I, and I do not teach you a Dhamma that is antidotal. I teach you a Dhamma that has a basis. It's, that is, it's not complicated. Okay. And I teach you a Dhamma with knowledge that you can use in life. And I teach you a Dhamma with an antidote to, and he's talking about the antidote to suffering in another sutta he spoke to an accountant named Ganaka Moggallana in the beginning of that sutta he made the statement that when he teaches, it is a gradual teaching with, with a gradual practice and gradual progress. When he talked in another sutta, he told us precisely what we have to do to experience Nibbana in this lifetime. He told us we have to understand five things. We have to understand how phenomena, ori the origination of phenomena in our mind, how do our thoughts arise? The disappearance of that phenomena. How does the anicca happen? In that origination, disappearance. The how we get caught 
by these phenomena that come up, how we get caught with the thoughts that come up. That's the gratification. And what is the danger of getting caught? And then, and then he said a very important word. Just the way he said there was an antidote. He, he said there was an escape. And so this is what the meditation is supposed to teach us to be able to watch and see how it all works. And how it teaches us to let go and how to do it in a practical way. But it has to be simple to remember. Because Every single tradition of Buddhism has kept one chant the same. Sanditiko, Akaliko, Eipasiko, Opanayiko, Pachitam, Veditabo, Vinuiti. Yeah, they know that, okay? So it, what does it mean? It means it was easy to understand what he taught. It was easy to understand. It was immediately effective in your life. So we have to know what it is and how it is immediately changing you in your life. It's so interesting when you watch it in the meditation that you it invites deeper inspection. You want to do the meditation to see how everything works. And the best part of it is this training that he taught back then. He said it will be untouched by time. And that means your brain is the same as the brain of someone that was in the time of the Buddha. And it can be purified and retrained for better behavior and a happier life. And that's the Buddhism I want to show you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Seems that there's been a lot of talk about meditation tonight. What really is meditation? Meditation is learning how mind works. And there are certain things that block us from this kind of understanding. The Buddha talked about there is suffering. And there is a cause of suffering. What is that cause? That is called craving. What is craving? Craving 
is the I like it, I don't like it mind. If you have a feeling arise and it's pleasant, your mind says, oh, I like that. If you have a painful feeling arise, what does your mind say? I don't like that. Now the key point of craving is that when it arises, you start taking that feeling, whatever it happens to be personally. This is me, this is mine, this is who I am. So this is the start of suffering. But when you continue on with the noble truths, it starts talking about the cessation of suffering. Now, your brain has two lobes in it. And there's a bag that goes around the brain. It is called the meninges. Every time you have a thought, every time a feeling arises, Every time there is a sensation, it causes the brain to expand against this bag that's holding it. And it causes tension and tightness in your mind and in your body. That is how you recognize craving when it arises. Relax. Let go of that tightness in your head. As soon as you let go of craving, your mind becomes very bright, your mind becomes very clear and very pure. Why? Because when you let go of craving, you are purifying your mind. It's not just about letting something go and relaxing. There's more to meditation than that. The next thing you have to do is bring up something that is very wholesome. Now, I teach meditation in a much different way than anybody else that I know. Because I want your meditation to be fun. And easy. So the next thing I tell you to do after letting go of the craving is to smile. What does smiling do? The more you smile, 
the better your mindfulness becomes. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness is remembering to observe how mind's attention moves. So your mind is on your object of meditation and all of a sudden you're thinking this or that. How did that happen? What happened first? Your mind is, didn't just all of a sudden jump over here. When you use mindfulness the way that I'm showing you right now, you will start to see everything as part of a process. <laughs> and it always works in exactly the same way. Your mind is on your object of meditation. There's little tiny thoughts that come in and your mind starts to wobble a little bit. And then it starts wobbling a lot and then it starts floating away to think this or that. So then you have to come back and recognize that your mind is distracted. Release the distraction. How do you release the distraction? By not keeping your attention on it. So even if you're in mid, mid thought, you don't pay attention to what your mind is thinking. Now you relax the tightness caused by that distracting thought. Next, you smile. Smile. Now, there's four different kinds of smile. You smile in your mind. You smile with your eyes. You have a little Buddha smile on your face. And you smile in your heart. The more you practice smiling when you're meditating, the better your meditation becomes. And the fa faster your progress becomes. You have a tendency to have joy arise in your mind while you're sitting. And this is a very good thing. Your mind is light, your mind is very alert at that time. Now you bring that light, happy mind back to your object of meditation. Now I teach two different kinds of meditation. I teach mindfulness of breathing. And I teach loving kindness meditation. I much prefer to teach loving kindness meditation. 
जे दत्ता भावना है ती मला जास्त आवडते शिकवते because it tends to make you smile and have fun ani evdes karte ya mukta bhavnacha madhyamatun bhavnacha tumhi jasti jasti sukhi hota tumhala khub bare vatte and the buddha said that when you practice loving kindness meditation your progress in the meditation is faster with the loving kindness than it is with any other meditation he taught tumhi kunti dhyan kara तर तुमचं कोणतेही ध्यान करण्याचं जर प्रकार तुम्हाला चांगल्या पद्धतीने घडवायचा असेल तर मेत्ता भावाने जर ध्यान केलं की बाकीचे सगळे ध्यान चांगल्या पद्धतीने तुम्हाला प्राप्त करते रिझन आय ओनली टीच टेन डे रिट्रीट आणि हेच कारण आहे की मी फक्त दहा दिवसात ध्यान शिकू शकवतो बिकॉज युअर अंडरस्टँडिंग अँड युअर डिरेक्ट प्रॅक्टिस इफ यू फॉलो द डिरेक्शन आणि तुम्ही जर खरं डिरेक्शन फॉलो केली दिशा फॉलो केली तर तुम्हाला त्या ध्यानाचा प्रकार किंवा उत्साह तुम्हाला येतो यू विल अंडरस्टँड बुद्धिस्ट टीचिंग व्हेरी डीपली आणि मग भगवान बुद्धाची शिकवण आहे की अगदी तुम्ही कोणवर शिकू शकता अँड यू विल हॅव मोर जॉय अँड हॅपीनेस अराईज देन यू एव्हर ड्रीम पास आणि मग तुमच्या भतकाळात तो तुम्हाला जो आनंद झाला असेल तो आता तुम्ही प्राप्त करू शकता too many times there are people that teach meditation and they want you to have suffering ani barinda ase garte ki anek lok tumhala dhyan shikavtat an ta dhyan cha madhyamatun bala lokana dukha prapti hote and they teach you to sit in a way that causes a lot of pain to arise in your body ani asha paddhatine basala sangta ki sakli paad dukhala lagte an sagla angu dukhala lagte i don't do that ni ase kai shikavta ha I want you to have fun when you're doing the meditation. Now this is an odd thing because how many meditation teachers do you hear say I want you to have fun? Ani mag ashe kiti tumhi guru ji paile shikavnale dhyan shikavnale ki je asa mantat ki mala tumhala hasat khelo dhyan shikavaycha. Most meditation teachers will say you have to try harder. पेन इज अ गुड ऑब्जेक्ट युअर माइंड वोट डिस्ट्रॅक्ट अवे फ्रॉम इट आणि जे दुःख आहे जे तुम्हाला होते इकडे तिकडे सगळं तोच चांगला तेच चांगलं माध्यम आहे ध्यान करण्याचं असं सांगतात बट दॅट्स नॉट द वे आय टीच पण तुम्ही असं काही शिकवत आय डोंट वॉन्ट यू टू हॅव पेन आणि मला तसं तुम्हाला दुखावायचं आय वॉन्ट यू टू सेट व्हेरी कम्फर्टेबली आणि मला असं वाटतं की तुम्ही अतिशय अतिशय आनंदी पद्धतीने बसला पाहिजे एव्हरी रिट्रीट दॅट आय गिव्ह मी प्रत्येक जे शिबिर शिकवलं आय टेल पीपल वेन दे फर्स्ट कम देर इज थ्री थिंग्स आय वॉन्ट फॉर यू आणि मग शिकवताना ते म्हणतात की माझ्या मला तुमच्याकडून तीन गोष्टी पाहिजे आय वॉन्ट यू टू स्माईल तुम्ही शास्त्र पाहिजे पहिली गोष्ट आय वॉन्ट यू टू लॅफ तुम्ही अगदी दुर्ज्ञान झाला पाहिजे आय वॉन्ट यू टू हॅव फन आणि मग ते तुम्हाला गोष्ट मजेदार वाटली जाईल टू मेनी टाइम्स मेडिटेशन इज टेकन टू सिरियसली बरेचदा आणि अनेकदा ध्यानाला फार लोक सिरियस घेतात अँड वेन दॅट हॅपन्स यू ट्राय टू हार्ड आणि असं घडतं तेव्हा तुम्ही जास्तच कष्ट ते करायला लागतात अँड इट मेक्स द मेडिटेशन मच हेवियर अँड हार्डर टू डू आणि अशा वेळेला तर ध्यान हे जास्तच कठीण होऊन बसतं The brilliant thing about the Buddha was he wanted everything to be simple. If dar Bhagwan Buddha ji sagrat mahata ji gosta shil te tana pratyek goshta sopi kara kara la kar pate kara la vatte. He did not want things to be complicated. Bhagwan Buddha la kunti goshta trishta vali asa kadhit vatle nahi. And many many times he talked about being happy. आणि भगवान बुद्ध प्रत्येक वेळेला अनेकदा म्हणत होते की तुम्ही सुखी कसं व्हाव सो वेन यू प्रॅक्टिस वर आय एम शोइंग यू राईट नाव इफ यू आर प्रॅक्टिसिंग राईट एफर्ट आणि जेव्हा मी म्हणेल की तुम्ही आता ध्यान चांगलं शिकवा तुम्ही पहिले शिकवाल की सम्यक व्यायाम ज्याला आपण म्हणतो पाणीमध्ये कसे प्रयत्न करावे अँड वेन यू पुट युअर स्माईल इन द मेडिटेशन जेव्हा हे प्रयत्न करताना तुम्ही हसू लागता किंवा हास्य पद्धतीने करता इट हेल्प युअर माइंड टू बी व्हेरी लाईट अँड ऑब्झर्वंट त्यावेळेला तुमचं पण अतिशय हलकं होत जातं 
if you have pain, your mind is going to be heavy and disliking that sensation. When I give a retreat, I make sure there are a lot of chairs around. Because if you're not used to sitting on the floor all the time, you can have a lot of pain arise. So I make sure you have a chair so that you can be comfortable. There's no magic in sitting in the, on the floor. The magic is in smiling and having a light mind that stays with your object of meditation. Many times I teach people that have done lots of other kinds of meditation. And my biggest problem with them is to get them to stop trying so hard. Because that's what they've been taught by all of their other meditation teachers. This is backing off and observing more clearly. And I have many students that are very surprised when they find out this is fun. Their mind naturally has more happiness in it and that happiness stays. I have people write to me by email six months after I gave them a retreat. And they thank me because they're still happy. See, when you get serious, that means your mind is very heavy. But when you have joy in your mind, your mind is very light. With a light mind, you're able to see much more clearly when your mind tends to get heavy and you can let it go more quickly and come back to that happy mind. And the more you smile and the more you laugh with yourself about how crazy your mind can be, don't feel bad, everybody's mind is crazy. But when you laugh, that is the fastest way to let go of anger, fear, anxiety, whatever arises. When you, let's say, you have anger in your mind. 
what's happening in your mind. I don't like this. And your mind is very heavy and hard. When you laugh at how crazy your mind is, your mind goes from I'm mad and I don't like it to it's only this anger and I don't need to carry it. So laughing at your mind about being caught and being attached helps to let go of that attachment. So the more you smile, the more you laugh, the lighter your mind becomes, the happier you will become. This isn't maybe. This is the way the Buddha teaches. I have seen many thousands of people benefit by practicing this way. Many times people will go do a meditation retreat. When they come home, they have a difficult time. And there's a lot of problems because you don't move slowly like you do in a retreat and you have problems integrating what you learned with what your daily activities are. That does not happen with what I'm showing you. I wrote a book called Life is Meditation, Meditation is Life. When you come and do a retreat with me, you will be able to carry those lessons with you with your daily activities. And your suffering will be a lot less. You will be able to let go of your highly emotional dislikes and fears and anxiety. This really does work. It only takes 10 days. Now, we, we mentioned Nibbana. You know what Nibbana means? Ni means no. 
Bana means fire. Bana means Agni. When you let go of craving, your mind becomes cool. That means Nibbana. See, there's two kinds of Nibbana. Every time you let go of that tension and tightness in your head, in your mind, you're letting go of craving. The Buddha described craving as a kind of fire. So every time you relax that tension and tightness in your head, you're letting go of craving. So your mind becomes cool. That is Nibbana. But this is a mundane kind of Nibbana. When you do this kind of Nibbana enough, then you experience the big Nibbana. Now, for some students, if they follow the directions that I give them when they come for the retreat, for some students, if they follow the directions the way I give them when they come for a retreat, you will be able to experience Nibbana and it will change your entire life. When I go to Indonesia and teach there, about half of the people that do the retreats experience Nibbana. It's very interesting to see how people change after they experience Nibbana and become more happy. And they don't have a mind that has high emotion, I don't like this, and I'm angry, and I'm yelling, and then I have sadness, and then my mind goes up and down like that. It after you experience Nibbana, that all changes. Your mind experiences more balance all the time. And life becomes much easier. And you start to learn that when you take care of the Dhamma, the Dhamma takes care of you.
then life starts to become magical. And by that I mean you start having a lot more fun than you've ever had before. So, do you have any questions? Okay. What I was talking to you when I was talking about recognize, release, relax, re-smile, return, repeat. This is called right effort. And this right effort will take you all the way to Paranibbana. And each different level of your meditation just gets better and easier and more fun. You lose anger. You lose your greedy mind. You practice more and more loving kindness towards everybody. And you have so much more balance in your mind. And this is definitely a form of happiness. This is how it works. So, I want to share some merit. You want to share some merit? Okay. okay. May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired. For the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhus.